Hi, I'm Daniel Rikita, and today I will be discussing work I did alongside my co-authors Bill Gay Mutlu and Michael Gleischer at the University of Wisconsin-Madison. In this paper, we present a new single-query sampling-based path planning method called SPRINT that can quickly solve high-dimensional path planning problems, such as for robot manipulator motion planning. So this is an overview for the rest of this talk, and we'll jump right into the motivation. Path planning is a process of finding a feasible, collision-free path of states that connect a start configuration to a goal configuration. A standard technique to solve the path planning problem is a sampling-based approach, such as RRT seen here. The same path planning concept can apply to many important problems, often in higher dimensions, such as finding a path of joint configuration states that afford a collision-free robot motion from start to goal. While, in theory, many sampling-based approaches are guaranteed to eventually find a solution if one exists, in practice, even state-of-the-art approaches are unable to consistently solve complex problems in reasonable amounts of time. In a robotics context, this challenge makes it difficult for robot applications that may rely on path planning as a subroutine, such as grass planning, autonomous robot navigation, task in motion planning, or shared control, to reliably progress at real-time interactive rates. To this end, the goal of our work was to create a new path planning algorithm that could find feasible solution paths as fast as possible particularly for complex, higher-dimensional robot manipulator motion planning problems. We now overview the general strategy our method uses to achieve this goal. So, one of the main bottlenecks in sampling-based path planning is needing to check whether the many samples taken from the configuration space lie in free space or in collision. This check is commonly referred to as a collision check query. These collision check queries are particularly expensive in a robot manipulator context, where just one collision check query involves intersection checks between pairs of the robot's own links for self-collisions, intersection checks between the robot's links and the environment, and potentially intersection checks between all pairs of links between multiple robots. Given the relatively high computation cost of each collision check, the overriding strategy of our method is to reduce the number of collision check queries. This strategy, in and of itself, is not unique. For example, lazy path planning methods and informed tree approaches also explicitly share this goal. However, as we explain further in the following section, our work presents a new technique for modeling and achieving a reduction of collision check queries in order to efficiently find path planning solutions. To achieve this goal, our method uses a few key insights. We'll start building up the intuitions of our method by looking at RRT solving the following path planning problem. RRT eventually finds a solution to this problem, but we see that it takes many extra residual samples and, in turn, collision check queries to construct this solution path. In our work, we formalize these residual samples as not being what we call delta useful because the samples are either not in free space or are not within a distance of delta of the final solution path. In this case, only about 10% of the total samples taken by RRT are delta useful with the given delta. Looking at RRT Connect solving the same problem, we see that a higher percentage of total samples are delta useful, but still more than 70% of the samples are not useful with respect to the current planning problem. Note that the definition of delta useful samples implies that it is unknowable whether a sample will be useful or not until a final solution is found. However, our key insight is that a planner can incrementally build and update probability heuristic models throughout the search that predict how likely regions of the search space will yield useful samples. These probability heuristics can be used to prioritize more promising search regions to foster a greedy first global search strategy while still exploring broadly in the limit, 
Call samples from local minima regions to avoid wasteful, unfruitful samples and steer the search toward search regions predicted to contain more useful free space samples. And before explaining our probability heuristics, we'll briefly look back at the previous planning example with Sprint included. Here, we see that using these probability heuristics, Sprint yields a higher percentage of useful samples and, in turn, more quickly finds a solution path with far fewer collision check queries. We'll now overview our method, particularly highlighting our probability heuristic functions. Sprint uses three probability heuristics to encourage the overall search to seek out regions with a higher chance of yielding useful samples. These probability heuristics are subcomponents of newly proposed global and local tree searches. In this part of the talk, we'll explain these global and local searches and highlight how the probability heuristics fit into them. We'll start with explaining the global search. The global search in Sprint uses a tree graph as a search structure rooted at the overall start state. The global search first samples a set of collision-free milestone points that serve as intermediary goals for the global search to reach en route to the goal, reminiscent of FMT star. In practice, we use around 50 milestone states for all problems, but for visual simplicity in this explanation, we'll use just five. At each global planning loop, the global search iterates through all pairs of current global nodes on the tree and all milestone points, and selects the pair of points with the highest probability of leading to a feasible and useful local search connection according to Probability Heuristic 1. At a high level, Probability Heuristic 1 uses two criteria. First, a good local search region should have an endpoint that gets closer to the goal. And second, a good local search region should be far away from any previous local search regions that did not reach their respective goals. The goal of this second criterion is to deprioritize the search from repeating a local search in a region already estimated to be a local minimum trap. In this case, since no previous local search has been attempted yet, the global search will greedily select a connection attempt between the overall start and overall goal. Let's now suppose that a local search connection is unsuccessful between this pair of points. In this case, the search stores the fact that this part of the space is a local minimum trap, and for the rest of the search, connections that resemble this line segment through space are deprioritized. Thus, even though this connection would get close to the goal and seems to be an attractive option based on Criterion 1, Criterion 2 would lower the probability of this connection in favor of a connection that is less similar to the previously seen local minimum trap. Now, let's suppose that a local search connection between these two points is successful. Here, the successful connection is visualized as a straight line, but it would actually be a path found by a local search tree instance, which will be covered in the following section. So here, the reached milestone point is added as a global node in the tree, and new local searches can now branch out from this node as well. This process continues until the overall goal is found, or another batch of milestone states has to be added. In our paper, we show that the structure of the global search affords probabilistic completeness in the limit, but the search as a whole is more geared towards finding solutions quickly with just a sparse set of milestones. We'll now overview the Sprint local search. The local search in Sprint is a greedy, depth-first search-like algorithm that uses its probability heuristics to intelligently select branching directions and backtrack to fruitful parts of the search tree. It is particularly adept at steering around approximately convex-shaped obstacle regions, squeezing through narrow passages, and detecting when it's stuck in a local minimum trap so it doesn't waste samples when a solution is unlikely to be found. 
The starting behavior of the sprint local search is to move in a straight line path toward the goal, each node extending out from the last. Each time a node is extended, the newly created node stores progress information at preceding checkpoint nodes. In this case, just the root of the local search, shown with a purple outline. For example, this progress information includes how close the new node has gotten to the goal, which we call exploitation progress, and how far the new node has gotten from the start, which we call exploration progress. If the local search is unimpeded, it will just resolve to a straight line. However, if the local search hits a collision, the search stores the collision point at previous checkpoints for quick retrieval later, backtracks to a previous node, and creates a new checkpoint. This process continues and all exploitation progress, exploration progress, and collision point information is stored at all previous checkpoints each time a node is added to the local search tree. The job of probability heuristic 2 in this process is to decide whether a node is worth extending or not. Let's say the search is deciding whether this node is worth extending. The probability value is constructed by looking at all checkpoint nodes preceding this node and assessing the progress information stored there. If all of these checkpoints indicate either exploitation or exploration progress in the subtree they are rooted at, the probability value will be high that the node will be extended and, if not, the probability will dip below a certain cutoff value and the search will backtrack to the previous node. If the search runs out of possible nodes to extend, the search terminates and reports back to the global search that it was unable to form a connection. So let's suppose that this node was just deemed worthwhile to extend based on probability heuristic 2. The job of probability heuristic 3 in this process is to calculate a direction to extend toward. Probability heuristic 3 will favor moving in straight lines towards the goal if possible. But if the search has previously hit collision points, the search will quickly access these nearby collision points that have been stored in preceding checkpoints, and a probability gradient field will push the extend direction away from these previously seen collision points, trying to push the search towards regions with a higher probability of containing useful free space samples. Collision points that lie in the half space behind the extend node are excluded from this collision gradient since they have already been passed in the space. This process repeats until the search either decides it is in a local minimum or reaches its goal. And putting the sprint, global, and local searches together in the following bug trap problem, we see that the probability heuristic functions in Sprint work together in order to quickly find a solution with many fewer collision checks than the alternative approaches. We'll now overview our evaluation used to show the efficacy of our method. We developed a set of seven benchmark robot motion planning tasks to compare our method against alternative path planners. The benchmark tasks seen here were designed to test the planners on a wide variety of tasks that range in dimensionality and topological structure. We included this set of planners in our evaluation. We found that the OMPL versions of RRT, RRT Connect, and FMT Star perform similarly but slightly better across all tasks compared to their respective Lynx implementations. So we only present the OMPL results for these planners. Each planner performed 100 trials over each task and had a maximum time limit of one minute per trial. The results at the top here show an overview of the average times needed to complete our benchmark tasks. We see that Sprint computed solution paths for the benchmark problems significantly faster than the alternative approaches. In the paper, Further analysis suggests that these results can be attributed to our approach for achieving sample efficiency through our probability heuristics. And the results at the bottom show that the paths computed by Sprint are shorter or at most similar in length compared to the other planners. 
This suggests that the performance advantages in computation time do not come at the expense of lower quality paths. Here, we visually show results on one of our benchmark tasks. Note that we fast forward the planning time after the first 15 seconds as indicated in the upper left corner. And wrapping up with a quick discussion, we note a number of limitations of our work that suggest future extensions. First, our probability heuristics were constructed by observation and intuition. While our three heuristics serve as proofs of concept for our overall premise, we believe that better models, either hand-engineered or data-driven, could improve results. Second, our approach also does not guarantee asymptotic optimality, though we are excited to explore extensions that could converge on better solutions over time. And a few overall takeaway points. First, our work suggests that incorporating the notion of probabilities over sample usefulness within a path planning approach can lead to significant performance gains. And second, we believe that our work more generally shows that a greedy, nimble, and flexible local planner like the one in Sprint can afford more greedy global search strategies that can often quickly traverse even high-dimensional search spaces to efficiently find solution paths. Thanks so much for watching, and feel free to check out our open source implementation of Sprint in our Lynx Robotics Library.